old saying that goes, you can't love two women at once. But Maurice Taylor is in a dilemma. A dilemma he fears will drive him to a nervous breakdown. A dilemma he tries to solve by murder. This is T4Y again on the stage of the Mystery Playhouse. You know, psychologists have demonstrated that a man may have many personalities. On the surface, Maurice Taylor was an ordinary, respected, middle-class Englishman. But deep within his subconscious was a voice urging him to solve a certain nerve-wracking problem by committing murder. Psychologists have demonstrated that a man may have many personalities. There is a surface personality, his normal routine everyday self, by which his friends know him. But deep within his subconscious mind, there may dwell another personality, unknown to the world, and perhaps unknown even to the man himself. Now, on the surface, Maurice Taylor was an ordinary, apparently respectable middle-class Englishman. But deep within his subconscious, there was a voice that urged him to solve a certain nerve-wracking problem by committing murder. <laughs> is about to leave. I must hurry and get aboard. Steady now, Maurice, steady. Killing your mistress and making your wife an accomplice to the crime isn't child's play, you know. Yes, I must get hold of myself. Muriel's on the train. And I couldn't stand any wifely concern. Not now, not now. Uh, sorry, madam. Look out where you're going. There are other people on this train beside you. That's a bad beginning, Maurice. And everything must work on the split-second schedule. You must see Muriel and then get back to your flat before Vera gets there. Vera, the other woman the papers would call her. Control yourself. If Muriel sees your face muscles twitching like that, she may decide to get off this train, not go to London at all. Then what would you do, Maurice? Oh, there you are, Maurice. You don't know what trouble it's been keeping a seat for you. Oh, really? Thank you, Muriel. I was beginning to think the 152 might be too early for you, and I'd have to go up to London alone. I told you if I was busy at the office, I'd meet you at the Chadwicks at 4.30, remember? Well, of course I remember, darling. I just thought that, well... What did you think? Tell me, what was it? Maurice! I asked you a question. What was it? Please, Maurice, let go of my arm. You're hurting I... me. Sorry. You are in a state, aren't you? You've been getting more and more nervous every day. Oh, I suppose it's just the thought of another dull afternoon at Chadwick, smelling my nerves. Oh, good Lord, I've nothing to read. I've got to get a magazine. But Maurice, the train will be off any second. But all right, I can still make the waiting room and back. I'll get on farther down. <laughs> later that I took the very next train. But what if someone sees me leaving the station now? They won't if you don't make yourself so conspicuous. Turn up your coat collar. That's right. Now stand here while the locro comes in. Luck is with me. The local is on time. The train I can later say I took to London. Relax now. In a moment a lot of country bumpkins will be pouring out of the station and you can lose yourself in the crowd. 
I wonder if Vera has arrived at the flat yet. Oh, Lord, how mad it is to kill her in my own home. On the contrary. Why shouldn't she visit your home? She's a friend of your wife's. And killing her there is the most clever part of your plan. Who would ever suspect that you would kill her there? Now start walking. That's right. Go on, leave the station. You mustn't keep Vera waiting. No, I can't keep Vera waiting. I must do it today. Oh, that's being sensible. Otherwise, it would be more than I could bear. My mind is spilling apart as it is. I'll go to pieces soon. I'll have a nervous breakdown. Yes, a nervous breakdown. This affair with Vera has been driving me mad. Paper, mister. All the rugby sport scores. Paper. Get your paper. What's that? Paper? Why should I want a paper? Don't bother me. Well, just as you say, Governor. Police. You called attention to yourself. Don't be so stupid. Now, where are you going? Surely you don't intend to take that bus over there. Every driver on the route knows you by sight. I have to take the number three bus. That'll take me out of the way, and I'll have to walk half a mile to the house. But there's little chance of anybody recognizing me. I'll sneak down those grubby, improbable s- streets and go in the back way. I'll be there by three. Now, aren't you glad you stopped and thought? You mustn't do things by habit. Here comes the right bus now. Run for it, Maurice. sort of thing according to a blueprint. Think of the advantage that gives you. You're merely committing a crime of passion. That's the kind of murder that gives Scotland Yard the most trouble. As a lawyer, you should know that. I don't want her to suffer. I don't want anyone to suffer, but I must find some peace. If I don't, the breakdown will come. Poor Vera. I wonder what she'll be thinking about when it happens. When I kill her. from other women. Have you remembered everything? There's the Ida down. Vera loves to lie in front of the fireplace, her eyes smiling up at the ceiling, as though she had some silly little secret from the rest of the world. And the package? The package, good Lord. Really, Maurice? It would have been very awkward if you had to go fumbling about for it when you needed it. Right here, bottom drawer of the wardrobe. Here it is. Everything's straight in my mind now. Hello there. Darling. Little Vera. Hello. Why is it I can't ever hold you close enough? Perhaps you've never really tried. Mm. Perhaps. Maurice, what are you trying to do? Break me in half? Your lips are always so cool, so steady, and that smell of lavender. <laughs> What's happened to you, darling? You're so very galant today. Am I? And actually trembling. Do I affect you that way? What do you think life with my wife has been? Well, I'm feminine enough to hope it's been a perfect hell. Your description of it is most apt. <laughs> well, aren't you going to take my coat? My glove? Oh, yes, of course. What a glorious fire. It seems the only sense of peace I ever get is sitting here, like this in front of it. Peace. 
blessed peace. Oh, come over here, darling. Sit next to me. At the moment, I'd rather just look at you. Maurice, there's something strange about you today. You're so near and yet so distant at the same time. No, my dear. Don't endow me with any mystic qualities. I'm merely a middle-class English non-entity who's dared to rebel against the dullness of domestic life. Maurice, have you ever wondered why I've gloried in our furtive appointment? Well? Well, it's very simple. I enjoy all this because you go about it so badly. Oh. Is that supposed to be a recommendation? Well, call it what you will, but it's exciting. Flattering. Go on. You're not made for carrying on an intrigue, Maurice. What exhilarates other men just torments you. I've known every night when you couldn't look Muriel in the eye. You've suffered wretched fits of depression and nerves. And all because of me. Maurice, are you listening to me, or are you more interested in that silly package you're holding? I'm listening. Well, then certainly you must have something to say. Shall I repeat myself? And say, I'll never again pass an old woman selling lavender without remembering that I once knew someone whose lips were always fragrant with it. Once knew someone? You're very sure I could never give you up, aren't you? Aren't you? How does it feel to have such power over someone else's life? It's damnable being with you, and it's just as bad thinking about you when you're away. No one could have put it more neatly than you did before. I don't think I like you in this moment. No, let's finish it. We've talked all about Muriel. How about Richard, your husband? Haven't there been nights when you couldn't look him in the face? Oh, Richard doesn't mean to me what Muriel does to you. I don't think of him as my companion till death do us part. To live comfortably in this world, Maurice, you've no choice but be philosophical. Meaning what? If your marriage is a failure, you simply have to make the best of a bad bargain. Especially when the bargain is profitable. Maurice, will you please stop fiddling with that package? There's something in it for you. I've looked forward all day to giving it to you. Oh, darling. No, don't get up. Don't get up. Stay where you are. But I want to see it. You know how I am about presents. Well, just turn around. Close your eyes. Well, but hurry. Oh, please don't keep me in suspense. I won't. Just a minute. Oh, please hurry, darling. Yes, Maurice, what are you waiting for? Such a perfect opportunity. She has her back turned to you and her eyes are closed. She won't know what's happened to her and you will be free, free at last. I can hear the rustle of paper, darling. Is it flowers? No. A necklace? No. Even if she turns around now, we say this delicately carved knife is for you, Vera. You can use it to open our love notes. Put your arms around me. When I see your presence, I want you to be near so I can kiss you. I won't keep you in suspense any longer, little Vera. Here it is. You didn't think we could go on like this endlessly day in and day out. like that of a sleepy child. Oh, Lord, how could I have done such a thing? What am I going to do now? Still shaken by the thought of having murdered Vera Carraway, Maurice Taylor sits hunk haunched behind his paper on the train to London. He knows it is too late to arrive at the Chadwicks in time to meet his wife, Muriel, for tea. Well, he'll meet her for the train back home at 6.05. But in the meantime, there is all the devilishly intricate necessity of building a foolproof alibi. He now stands in the crowded London station pondering his next move. Vera. 
This is the most crucial stage of all, Maurice. Muriel. Stop thinking about your wife. That's all you've been doing on the train. And there are so many other things to occupy your mind. How could I brazen it out when Muriel sees Vera's body there in the living room? I'm not that much of an actor to simulate horror, surprise, pity. First things first. Right now, there's a very important telephone call you must make. Go on. Pick up that phone. Call Tony Baines at his club. Now, if Tony Baines is following his usual schedule, all is well. Hello, is Tony Baines there? Oh, no, don't bother. How long has he been there? Since lunch, eh? No, no message, thank you. Goodbye. It's lunch, eh? Perfect. Now, get over to his office at once. Hour after hour, waiting for him. Instead of being impatient because you have to wait in the corridor for Baines, you should toss up your hat in the air and cheer. This is perfect, Maurice. Been at the club since 12. Now it's after 5. So much the better. Suppose Baines gets tight and doesn't come back at all. Then what'll I do? Don't get panicky. If there's anything you can count on in this world, it's habit. You've known Baines since law school. He'll show up at his office for a few minutes as a sop to his conscience. here. Hello, Tony. Never can tell when you suburbanites will show up. Quite right. Oh, it's wonderful to see you, old chap. But you should have let a fellow know. We, we could have made an afternoon of it. Surprising the things you can get done a free afternoon in London, eh? Or have you forgotten old, you old married stick in the mud? On the contrary, Tony, I agree with you. You can get a great many things done of an afternoon. Things no one would ever suspect or know about. <laughs> you sly old fox. Well, Come on in and tell me about it. Now, where are those blasted keys? In your hand, Tony. Hey? Oh, yes. There. Ah. How long have you been waiting, Maurice? Not too long, I hope. Almost two hours. Oh, I say, that is a shame. Not your fault. Well, it must be very important. In fact, it is. Tony, you could use a little extra business, couldn't you? Extra business? Could I? Well, I think I can help you out. Maurice, if you only could, you, you've no idea how, how rough things have been. Oh, I say, you make me feel like a swine, making you wait out in the hall for hours when you come bearing gifts. It's all right. Must be quite a bit of business you have up your sleeve, Maurice. And I'm very glad to be able to do this, Tony. I've always felt you never got a real start since we got out of law school. Oh, wretched luck. You've no idea. Well, to get to the point... Uh, sit down, have a drink. No, no, thank you. I don't think there's enough time. As you know, Tony, my partner Morgan has been ill. In fact, he's been talking of retiring. Mm, I believe I heard someone mention it. I had no idea how hard I'd been working until, well, I began to feel a uh, little shaky the other day. I can't afford to break down, you know. No, of course not, old man. So I was thinking, if you'd care to take it on, you could have a part of Morgan's accounts. Part of Morgan's accounts? George, I, I can't tell you what this means to me. I always think of the two hours you've been waiting for me as, as the most decisive moments in my life. So will I, Tony. So will I. Well, I have to go now. Uh, sure about that drink? Quite sure, thank you. I must meet Muriel and catch the 605. <laughs> Honestly, tried to make it. But... Maurice, why all this fuss? First, all this business about the Chadwicks, and now almost missing the train. Missing it? Why, it hardly took you any time at all to get a package of cigarettes, and there are still a few minutes before the train leaves. Cigarettes? Yes, silly. You've got them right there in your hand. Oh. Now, come on, darling, or we won't get a seat. <laughs>
Look at Muriel there in the corner of the seat. Her eyes closed. Her hand so delicately against her cheek. She wasn't at all upset about my not turning up at the Chadwick's. She always meets the disagreeable things in life like that. Gracefully. Fastidiously. Good Lord, if I only had her composure. Well, she'll need every bit of it soon when we get home. Home. Oh, Lord, Vera lying there dead. Dead. I can't stand it. Stop that. Pull yourself together. But so much can go wrong. I'll give myself away to Muriel. No, you won't. Muriel will hate me. She'll turn me over to the police. Will you stop that, you fool? I wonder if Muriel will scream when she sees the body. Darling, did you say something? What? Uh, no. Perhaps I was thinking aloud. Oh, you're tired, aren't you? Well, you'll feel better when we get home. <laughs> Taken a taxi home. And have you loaded down with all these parcels? There's no hurry about getting home, mister. You talk as though you didn't care when you got home. That's the most stupid thing I've ever heard you say. Police, must you talk to me like that? Oh, I have a rotten headache. You'll feel better after dinner. For heaven's sake, stop being so wifely. I'm not a child. You know, I'd hope the trip up to London would take your mind off business and quiet your nerves, but it doesn't seem to have helped at all. Well? Well, what? Well, surely we're not going to sit here in front of our house in a taxi all night. Oh. Well, Reese, we've got to talk this whole thing out tonight. All right, but let's not begin now. It'll be two and six, sir. Two and six? Hot you up. Let me see now. How much did you say that was again? I said two and six. Oh, yes, of course. I don't know if I have the change. Why, well, you get more than enough right there in your end, sir. Have I? Well, here, take it. Take it all. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. You know, it's one thing being generous, Maurice, but people don't just dump all their money into a cabbie's hand like that. I, I have the key. Don't you go and see. I will just as soon as I get my hat and coat off. That's smart. Let her go in the living room first. When she discovers what's happened here, she'll be so terrified she won't watch your reactions. Well, the moment is here, Maurice. The most difficult part. It's all right. Hold tight to the doorknob. You need something to lean on. I don't know if I can stand it. She's going in now. Muriel, no! You mustn't go in there. You mustn't. Darling. Oh, dearest, what is it? Look, you must let me help no you. No one can help me. Maurice, I'm worried about you. You've been acting strangely all afternoon. Everyone at the Chadwicks noticed the it. The Chadwicks? I wasn't there. But of course you were. Now, Maurice, I want you to come into the living room with me. Don't go in there. Oh, don't be silly, dear. I No, have I you. said. Maurice, please, I'm going. No! Oh. Uriel. Muriel, I didn't mean to hit you. Muriel! She's dead. Dead. Someone's at the door. Lord, what'll I do? I'll get rid of them. I'll give some excuse, anything. Hello, Maurice. Vera. Why, of course, silly. Don't you remember? You... <laughs> Maurice, what's the matter? <laughs> then I didn't kill you. I didn't kill you. What? The breakdown had come already. It was only in my mind. I was at the Chadwicks, as Muriel said. Maurice? As Muriel said. Where's Muriel? <laughs> oh, answer me. Where's Muriel? <laughs> Muriel? <laughs> Muriel? <gasps> Muriel? Now at 
it's time to close the mystery playhouse. This is T4Y saying good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.